All right, so today, unfortunately there's no video today, had a bit of an incident and my face is not looking top side of side of it. You know what, it's better to not show the internet um, a rough boy's face. And instead, we're, all we're gonna focus on is Lizzie Dignan's bike. Now obviously Lizzie Dignan won Paris Bay uh, this year, first women's Paris Bay ever, which is great. It was about 116K, she averaged 40 kilometers an hour, just under three hours. Um, we're gonna talk about maybe distance later, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is this, it's the first race and Trek have done something special on the women's and the men's side. And I thought we'd go through a bike because it was an incredible ride, but I also think Trek are quite switched on on certain stuff. Not all things, but they are um, switched on. So anyway, you obviously can see straight away, we're on one by. Now, I think number one, this is a marketing thing. 100% it's a marketing thing because I know the pro riders dislike riding one by, they don't trust it, all the rest of it. However, it may be a marketing thing, but it's smart. Okay, obviously you don't need an inner ring because it's pan flat Roubaix. Okay, maybe on the, on the men's they do got like a hilly cobbled section, but to be honest, if they have a 50 tooth on the front, which we're gonna get into in a minute, um, like you can still get up it, it's fine. And the game's gonna make a huge, it does have a chain catcher, which I think is unnecessary. Um, and I think most people will probably also say it's unnecessary, but I think for pros, they're very worried about dropping their chain. And I guess the point is the aerodynamic disadvantage of having a chain, uh, a chain catcher is not that much. People say maybe like two or three watts, but compared to a front derailleur, it's still less. And obviously you don't have an inner ring, which is also aero drag as well. Uh, moreover, the chain ring is also solid. So if you look at the old school, uh, well not old school, but just the other SRAM ones, they got holes in them. And because it's rotating, a lot of people say it's very important to have that solid, which is good. Um, it's a 50 tooth on the front, um, which I think I'm gonna talk about now. Obviously that's not ideal. You want big chain rings because big chain rings mean straighter chain line. Um, and also the, obviously the bigger the chain rings are, the more efficient they are. There's less articulations with the chain. So, you know, let's say this was Shimano on a standard. She, if she ran a 54, 11, 28, she'd be sorted. Like that would be ideal on a narrow wide as well. Some people again will disagree and say you don't want narrow wide because it increases drivetrain efficiency. However, if your train drops off, it's not worth it. Um, the wheels is an interesting selection, I think, to be honest. Like, I'm surprised she hasn't gotten deeper. I can understand maybe why. It's because um, these ones are gonna flex a little bit more. They feel better um, when they're slightly shallower. I don't really know why, but everyone does say that, um, that they're a bit more comfortable sometimes. Um, and her, her tires we're also gonna get into. Obviously, she's running SRAM Red ETAP. Um, so yeah, this is the chain ring. It's got a K-Edge chain ring um, sort of mount on it and that looks like it's not coming off does it that looks like super super strong and it's really good that the um, track are doing this i think it's showing world tour riders that actually you know what one by is the future and also hopefully it will push shimano to make one by because i think it's a really important thing especially for flat races especially for time trials like if you're a sprinter and it's a pan flat race if you have a fit like a single one by 54 tooth 56 tooth you are going to go faster in that final sprint and I think with Roubaix, you know, she had 80 kilometers on her own. She won by like a minute and 14. I'm not gonna say this is why she won, but you know, it's a contributing factor. A watt is a watt. If you can gain a watt, it's a good idea, um, which is always nice. Her, her frame is obviously a Damani, which has like the sort of suspension. They call it ISO speed decoupling. I believe they have it front and rear, um, which makes it way more comfortable. And Roubaix at the end of the day, especially for the women, because they didn't have the large road section at the beginning. They were into the cobbles pretty early on. Okay, they only had 30 kilometers out of 116, but it was like, it wasn't like the men's where they have like 100K of flat, or not flat, but just like tarmac before cobbles. So comfort is really key. She's got the blips up here, which you can see. So when she's on the top, she can easily shift, which I think is a really good idea. If you watched her on it, she did spend quite a lot of time actually in the drops, which I thought was, you know, an interesting choice, but maybe she just prefers it there, obviously. Um, she kept a really high cadence, which was quite good. She did have some terrifying things, like watching was actually pretty worrying because people were just crashing everywhere. Um, which is not good. She's got a wahoo on the front. She doesn't look up that. Apparently she just doesn't really like power data. She just does what she wants. Um, these bottle cages, again, you want, don't want your bottles to drop out. You've got to keep your feeds um, good. If you want to feed, like you don't want it flying out because these people like normally, you'd hope, uh, have calculated how many grams of carbs they need an hour. And if it's flown out, then that's not ideal. So yeah, it's good that she's got like a proper bottle cage. That looks pretty solid. It doesn't look like you're going to get much flying off. We look at, she's riding on tubulars, which is interesting. Um, some people are now doing tubeless, but obviously Christoph, he went on tubeless, he didn't have a good idea. Uh, I believe these were probably 30 or 32. You could probably go even wider. If you had a slightly wider, wider rim, maybe you could go like 34. Um, and again, it just makes it easier in the mud. Like, okay, if it was dry, maybe 32 would be enough. But if you watched it, it was like I'm riding on farm tracks, which are super muddy. Obviously they are farm tracks, so that's a dumb comment. But you know what I mean, super muddy. 
Um, so yeah, interesting choice. These were some Paris-Roubaix special tires, um, which I guess I think just have a bit more grip and a bit more punch protection as well. I don't believe she punctured either, which is a, always an impressive thing. She's got the kilometers with the cobbles on them, which is clever. I mean, GPS units need to get on this so you can actually program when things are. I mean, it must be a bit embarrassing if you sponsor the team. I don't know if who do, but you see these people with the, like stuff on them. Like, why can't you set it so you can say on your route, you know, pop up with 15K, to, like 5K before the climb and you could put it on. I mean, that just seems so obvious. I mean, I've come up with it in my bedroom. I'm pretty sure Wahoo are employing about a million people full time could also come up with this. And then maybe you wouldn't have these things that look like they're from the 1960s. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, but I just think if you're sponsoring them, it would be an interesting addition. Maybe it doesn't appeal to amateurs, however. And she also rode with no gloves because she's an absolute legend, which is, I just can't believe, and was like bleeding, which is pretty mad. Um, and again, again, just the picture of the drive chain, pretty muddy. Is it a wax chain? I don't know. But if you're not on a wax chain, I don't really get it. Okay, maybe today you wouldn't want to necessarily because it was very muddy. But nonetheless, it does seem a bit of an odd choice from myself. Um, and then this is just a picture of her um, tops. It's annoying, no one's done power day. I would do power day analysis. Saddle, I assume, is just standard. And she doesn't even flip the 13. She's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna smack it. Um, I just want it anyway. So anyway, that's the review of Lizzie Dynan's bike. Overall, I think it's a really good setup. Maybe tubeless is the only advantage just because better rolling resistance. But then if you puncture, it's more issues. But apart from that, you know, one buy is good. Obviously, it could increase the the size of it um, but apart from that looked very good setup she also looked maybe similar to her road position on her like uh, madonna it would be or a monda um obviously it's a different frame slightly less aggressive um but yeah anyway super impressive no aero socks either i don't really get that i mean people look oh yeah, Philippe didn't have aero socks it's like yeah well, that's cool but like you know if you can do as many watts as him it's probably get away with it but like you know it's small gains in it just just everything you can get but anyway Looked a mint setup. Did enjoy Roubaix. Uh, quite a lot of crashing, which wasn't ideal. But apart from that, uh, cheers for watching. Hope you did.